Fucking hell, trusting the steering of the car to a machine? I probably shouldn't be doing that on corners this tight. <laughs> I've never been further southwest than uh, Salisbury. Genuinely don't know if we're going to make it. And it won't turn on. So we're going to do something that's never been done before. We are going to take the Tesla Model 3 from right here in London Paddington all the way down to Land's End in Cornwall. That is 300 miles or so away. A car that has 360 miles of range should be no problem. Honestly, I've never driven a Tesla before, so I'm pretty excited to see what this car is like, especially on those windy roads down the countryside. Honestly, I can't wait. First impressions driving the car. Everything is the same, but it's also different. You've got the smooth leather interior, you've got the leather wheel. It is very pristine, even by new car standards. There's something about the Tesla that's just, it feels good, for want of a better term. It is not really like any car I've ever driven before. It is very easy driving this. I mean, the one thing that has been working really to Tesla's advantage, the regenerative braking essentially means you don't need to use the actual brake very much. And you're getting some range back. After driving the car here this morning, we're actually 40 miles short of a full battery. So with 300 miles to go, I hope this doesn't come back to haunt us. I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to make this, but obviously there's that little voice at the back of your head that's just saying like, mm, are you sure? As we finally escape from the London traffic, we hit the open road, where I started to think about charging. Tesla has invested a lot of time in its supercharger network, coupled with all the other electric car chargers that are popping up across the country. You are absolutely spoiled for choice on where you can actually plug it in. But here's the clincher. Tesla superchargers are wicked fast. We're talking 250 kilowatt speeds, which can add 170 miles of range in just 15 minutes, which is absolutely nuts. It feels powerful. Fucking hell. Wow. Jesus. And this isn't even the most powerful car Tesla produces. It's not even the most powerful Model 3. You've probably spent so many years driving a petrol car that you're so used to the sound of the engine telling you how fast you're going. But it's an electric car, so there is no noise. One minute, you're cruising along at 60. Next minute, bam, you're at 70. Driving the Tesla has been great so far, but I'm curious about one of the main selling points. Autopilot is the Tesla driving itself. It uses all the cameras, all the sensors to recognize the surroundings and see exactly what's going on in the outside world. The driver has to be in the driver's seat, fully aware of what's going on, but while it's active, you don't actually have to do a damn thing. So I'm gonna give Autopilot a try. This is so weird, but the car is steering itself. You can feel it tilting in your hands. It's almost like using a Ouija board. You're trusting the steering of the car to a machine. It does seem to be doing its job. So we are now about 80 miles into our journey. We've got 220 miles left to go. And according to the Tesla, we've got 253 miles of range left. So far, it's been pretty accurate, despite the fact we've been driving down the motorways, which are a notorious battery sink. So autopilot is great, and the range has been accurate so far, but we still haven't answered the real question. Is range anxiety dead? 360 miles of range can go a long way. We are literally driving from London to the end of the country, or we're trying to. I'm really starting to get the feel of the Model 3 now, all of its buttonless quirks and auto driving tech. But after several hours of driving, I needed a break. So, the Tesla route planner says that we should be recharging the car around here, but we only have 125 miles left to go on this trip, and we still have 155 miles left in the tank. There's absolutely no point recharging halfway through the trip. So I'm gonna go have a coffee instead. Well, I timed it. We've been here for just over 17 minutes, and in that time, we would have normally added over 170 miles of range to the Tesla. But since we didn't plug it in, we now have to see how far this car can actually go on what it's got left. Back on the road. We are now 100 miles away from Land's End. We are two thirds of the way through the journey. We are two thirds of the way through the battery. This is where the whole anxiety part of range anxiety comes from. It's like you start going down. It's like, uh, are we gonna get there? I think we might just scrape it by the skin of our teeth. Have you ever been to Land's End? <laughs> I've never been to Land's End. Never been to Cornwall. I've never been further southwest than uh, Salisbury. We know that autopilot works on the motorway. We know that autopilot works on the A roads. I want to see how it fares on the classic English country road. Let's really put it to the test. 
and autopilot is on. It's it's doing really well actually. Oh, it's a bit tight. <laughs> Let's see how we do. It's, it's handling it. It's handling it like a champ. I am constantly fighting the urge with this to just take over. I am very impressed with Autopilot. A car that can map the country roads and drive is nothing short of outstanding. I'm really enjoying this road trip. The Model 3 has still stuck to its word about its range and we're getting to see some gorgeous countryside. But after driving over 250 miles, we now only have 60 miles of range left and 50 miles to go. I'm starting to get nervous. We are literally one closed road away from not being able to make this. That's just how close it is. Is range anxiety really about how far the car will go, or is it more about how far you can go? Because if you can drive 600 miles without stopping for a toilet break, then range anxiety might be a thing. Now we're on a real country road where there's room for one car. Let's see how autopilot can handle this. And it won't turn on. So there are limits to what the system can handle. So no clear markings, no autopilot. If only there was something else that could cover this bit of the journey for me. What is great about this ferry is that it's actually used to cut across a 27 mile route upriver and has actually been in operation for 130 years. It essentially serves 5 million cars every single year, saves around 750,000 litres of fuel and prevents about 1.5 million tonnes of CO2 entering the atmosphere. I reckon Elon would love this. Eco-friendly ferries aside, we're finally closing in on our target. And then the dreaded range anxiety really began to kick in. We're getting close to danger zone now. 36 miles to go before we reach Land's End, and we have 43 miles of range left. We have seven miles to spare. We've been driving for over 10 hours. There's no way you do this journey without stopping for a break. <sighs> It's gonna be cutting it pretty fine. Are you nervous? Yes. And then things really got tense. Three miles to go, 10 miles of range. Five minutes, mile and a half to go. Please. I mustered every last bit of bravery I could and pushed past its recharging warnings and into the break. My heart was racing as the battery drained away, but then I saw something finally in the distance. Oh, there it is. There it is. Come on! We're here. We are past the sign for Land's End. We have made it from London to Land's End on one charge. We have done city driving. We've done motorways. We've done A roads, country roads, towns, villages, and even a ferry. And we've gone over 300 miles in a Tesla Model 3 on one single charge. Is range anxiety dead? You tell me. My name's Tom Pritchard. You've been watching Drive.